shopping for about 10 years now. I've always been fascinated by trains ever since I was a little kid and uh, just figured I'd give it a shot and I guess long story short I gave it a try and ever since I've been kind of hooked. I guess there's a big adventure aspect to it. There's kind of a excitement that goes along with it. I mean, train hopping, you're kind of a ghost, so it, when, whenever we uh, plan something out and we execute it and we haven't been seen, we haven't been caught, and no one really knows that we exist, then that's, that's probably like the perfect train hop. Uh, there's a lot of dangers. Uh, there's different kind of dangers. I mean, aside from getting caught, which isn't really so much a danger, because it's more or less getting busted and just getting a fine. But the main uh, dangers as far as hazards would be uh, moving trains that you don't necessarily see coming, especially at night. Uh, but sometimes you could be crossing in between the little cars and they could just kick. You might not, again, hear that locomotive because it's far away. And uh, next thing you know, boom, you get lose your grip, fall underneath, and then get crushed. I know growing up, my dad had always said that he'd take me one day to a train hop across the country. I think we tried a few times, but it never really, never really worked out. Last summer, me and my girlfriend, we ended up deciding that we were going to fly from Ottawa to Halifax, start a journey from there, and work our way over to Vancouver. So we stand out to Halifax and meet Paul. We've actually hopped with the train with a few other times, a good friend of ours now. We met him in Halifax, and we just caught out of there. I guess about an hour outside of Halifax, someone had seen us and called us in, and they stopped the train, and the, car, the RCMP were coming car to car, checking each car to see if anyone was on it. And so we jumped off and hid in the bush, and they checked our car, and they kept going. Then we jumped back on the train, and uh, all of us said, well, maybe we should hide on the other side just in case they come back the other way. So we hid a little further in the bush, and the next thing we know, the train whistle blows and the train starts going. So we're running up. We're getting up beside the train. It's, it's going at a, fair, at a decent speed. I get on. Paul gets on. But Nina couldn't catch up with her big, heavy bag. And Paul tried to pull her up, but he couldn't. I guess he couldn't hold her weight, and he let her go, and she fell on the rocks. And then, of course, I had to jump off because I'm not going to leave my girlfriend behind. And I just remember Paul looking over. He's never ridden a train before. He's all by himself, and the train's kind of taken off. And I'm just, I told him just to keep going because he knew that the next stop was his house. So we, we get on the next train that's leaving, and by then it's starting to rain a little bit. But uh, we're just happy to finally get back out. And then it started raining very, very heavily. And we were just op wide open on the back of the intermodal. Rain's pouring in. Uh, we tried every, we, we tried everything to kind of stay dry, but at to one point our bags were soaked, our clothes were soaked, everything was soaked. And that was just the start of a long string of unfortunate events on that trip. Then uh, we were in Quebec City, we ended up getting seen again, and we were stuck there for four days trying to catch out. And of course, I only gave myself two weeks to do this whole trip, so after uh, being put behind about a week, I realized it wasn't going to be possible, so... This month I'm going to, I'm going to uh, take an open ticket from work and make sure that I do it because I, uh, I can't keep putting this off.